Hey guys, Kevin here with eTrailer, and today we're going to be installing the Jensen RV stereo system here on our 2007 Flagstaff Super Light travel trailer. So if your stereo is kind of worn out, maybe it just doesn't work anymore. Um, with our old one here, it doesn't have a HDMI port, which our neighbor wants. Uh, that's kind of the indicator that you need to switch up and swap out your old bulky RV stereo system. So the Jensen RV stereo system is your standard AM FM stereo with a few extra features. You can switch between three different zones, easily turning them on and off. It also has a USB and HDMI in input so that you can hook up multiple different devices, whether it be your Fire Stick, your Roku, whenever you're watching TV and want to have your TV uh, and shows all play through your RV stereo system or if you're just wanting to play some music through those. Uh, along with the three different zones, the A and B zone, which would be the inside of your trailer, have their own Bluetooth connection point. And then also your C zone has it separate so that you can play rock music outside or country music inside or whatever you feel like if you have differing tastes from your family. So when you're looking at the zone right here, there's going to be a square box around which zone you're in. So right now we're controlling zone A and B, but if I press on our volume knob here, it's going to switch over to zone C. Right now zone C is set up for Bluetooth 2, so what it's trying to do right now is say, hey, I want to pull that Bluetooth connection to play outside. But if I switch back, it'll be back on that FM that I already have it on. Uh, if I wanted to, I could have that FM through all three zones as well. The stereo is also going to come with a remote, which will also allow you to control the stereo as well as your TV. Um, here you have all your buttons going through each kind of setting and then also just your station numbers or TV numbers if you're trying to cycle through any of that just so it's a little bit easier because sitting here and pressing the back or forward button and going through all of those to find the station that you want to be on can take quite a bit of time. Like I said, there is three different zones for this right now. Uh, C is our outside, and as you can hear, it is playing currently. If I wanted to, I could switch that off though, or I could switch that to a different uh, Bluetooth setting just so I can listen to whatever I want if I'm outside and my family inside wants to watch a movie or listen to something different. If you wanted to turn down the brightness, uh, that way you're not blinding yourself in the middle of the night, you can easily just press the power button. It'll turn the brightness down on the stereo or you can hold the power button to turn it off and it will completely shut down the stereo and the second you want it back on just go ahead and press that power button again and it'll pop right back up. As far as installation goes there is a very big misconception about wiring harnesses. Um, no manufacturer really puts any together that you can easily just swap over your new radio into but for the most part it is super super simple. As long as you grab the installation uh, guide or manual from your old stereo and you can look up what that wiring diagram is or just search that up on the internet and then compare that to your new one and just slowly go through the colors and make sure that you're matching the corresponding wires together it is super super simple as the times have changed things have gotten a whole lot smaller so putting this stereo in this big old gaping hole here is going to be a little bit of extra work so we'll start off, I'm going to take off the sides here, and we'll get a good idea of just how big of a hole is behind this. Pull our screws out. And then we can pull our stereo out and take a look. So here we have our cutout hole. Obviously our stereo is not going to fill in that whole space. So if I put that in there, we got plenty of room sliding that in. Uh, but obviously we won't have enough room to actually mount it either because our mounting holes are kind of half on the lip of our cabinet here and half into the hole. So what we're going to do is I'm going to measure our cutout hole. Our width right here is about seven and three quarters. And our height is six, 
It's like six and 15 sixteenths, maybe just a hair under. So we're gonna need to make sure that we get a board that we can kind of cover this up with because we're gonna make this go actually wider than our hole and we'll screw it onto our actual cabinet here. And then we can cut a hole for that and put our new stereo into that and mount it up to that board. So sometimes on our stereo systems, we will have a wiring diagram, which is gonna tell us exactly which one of these wires goes to what in our wiring harness. So we can use that, or if we can't find it on here, we can look up the model. Like this one right here is a drive stereo and it's a ZX75. So we could go online if we don't have the manual anymore and look that up and just find out what our wiring harness is. That's gonna save us a whole lot of time because then we don't have to try and trace back all the wires in the wall and figure out exactly where they go. We know, hey, it's hooked up to this particular wire on our wiring harness. We know exactly what that is. And then with our new stereo, it also comes with that, but it also comes with it in the uh, instruction manual as well. So you can easily go through that and have that open and just simply go through and swap over all the wires from this wiring harness to the new wiring harness that's gonna come with our stereo because these actually do not intertwine. Um, I don't think I found a single stereo system where the manufacturers made it to where you can easily just swap over and reuse the same harness. So to go through and match up our wiring from our old stereo to our new one, I'm just gonna slowly go through each color here. I can pull those two wires up in our actual wiring harness from our old stereo to our new one and splice those together using some butt connectors. So I've gone through all my speaker wires. I've got all that up now. All we have left is our power and our ground. You can see on our old system, it has a fuse in it for the power. Right there, just an inline fuse. Uh, with our new stereo, the fuse is already on it. It's right on the back, right above where your wiring harness would plug into. So we don't need that fuse anymore because we already have one. So I would pull this off for my power and my ground, but I do want to mention just this last wire that we have from our new wiring harness, it says amp remote. That just basically sends the power to your subwoofer if you want to turn your subwoofer on and have it play through that as well. We don't have a subwoofer in this RV, so we're just not gonna use this. And as you can see, it's already kind of capped off because that's kind of just an optional wire because not everyone's gonna have a subwoofer. So we'll just get these last power and ground wires hooked up. Power's good. Now with our ground hooked up, that will complete our wiring harness. We can go ahead and plug it into our stereo and just test it out. And power it on. So now that I have my piece of wood kind of cut down to size to cover that big hole that we have from our previous stereo, I'm gonna go ahead and try and get this new stereo mounted directly in the center of it. But to do so, I'm gonna need to measure the body of it so that I can make sure that I have a large enough hole in our board to mount it to. So to do that, I'm gonna measure the body. And as you can see on most of these stereos, it's gonna to start to kind of taper in, but we wanna make sure that we're getting that widest part because this little piece right here has to sit inside of our wood because our face plate up here is gonna be flat up against that. So take our height measurement, which is about three and seven sixteenths. And then our length. And like I said, like on this side, it's really kind of tapering in. So we want to make sure that we're right down at the edge. That way we don't have to sit there and kind of sand the hole out more or trim it more to get it to fit. So this side is going to be seven and one sixteenth. So now that I have my cutout all drawn out, I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out this hole. And then we can just pop that out. And if you want to just take some sandpaper and kind of clean up those edges a little bit. Now that we've got our cutout fully out, we can test our stereo. And as you can see, drops right in. We can easily screw this into the board. 
So now what I'm gonna do is take this outside. I'm gonna get it painted up, make it look nice. That way it uh, kind of matches more inside of our camper and we'll get it in place. So I've got my stereo and my piece of wood that I'm using to cover our cutout hole. Um, so our stereo does not come with any hardware and the openings for your screw heads are pretty small. I lucked out, I was able to find some bolts that I could put through that were actually small enough to actually sit inside of there. So I have this bolted down. Now we're gonna go ahead, we'll hook up our wire harness. And then our antenna. And if you wanted to hook this up to a TV, you'd go ahead and put in either your AV cords or your HDMI cable and then run that through. Uh, our neighbor today doesn't need that, so we're gonna leave that alone. And we'll just push our wiring back up into our cutout. Now that I kind of have this in place, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a couple screws in. I'm just gonna be putting it right in the corner. Now that we have our board in place and our stereo's up and running and we know that it's working, that will complete our installation of the Jensen RV stereo system. My name's Kevin. Thanks for watching.